On the day after Yom Tov, I was sitting with my son on the beach, watching the Mediterranean Sea crashing down against the coast of our holy land. And he said to me, you know, Daddy, it's amazing how the waves are so powerful. They rise so high. And a moment later, they're gone. There's just so much foam. It's a bit like the holidays, the Chagim. You have a wonderful time and then it's gone. The Talmud in Bavabastra Daf Dalad Amun Aleph says that someone who never saw the second temple that Herod built has no idea of what a beautiful building is. Herod built the outer walls of the Beit HaMikdash, the temple, using aquamarine and white marmara marble. Herod's idea was to cover the entire wall with gold, but the sages told him he should leave it the way it was because the different colored strata of the marble resembled the waves of the sea. Now, our sages were not in the business of giving decorating advice, so there must have been something much deeper in their words. King David says in Tehillim, in Psalms, You, Hashem, rule the grandeur of the sea. At the height of its waves, you praise them. Although the crest of the wave is but for a brief moment, that's the moment that Hashem chooses to praise them for doing His bidding. Hashem had great joy in the building of the Beit HaMikdash. The Mishnah says that when Shlomo HaMelech refers to the day of Hashem's joy, the joy of his heart, Yom Simchas Libo, he means the day that the temple was built. Now, no one knew better than Hashem that both Bat HaMikdash, both temples would stand for but a few hundred years and then like a wave come crashing to the ground. Nevertheless, that was the day of the joy of his heart, the wave at its height, at its crest, and thus the walls of the Beit HaMikdash should resemble the waves of the sea. That the Beit HaMikdash should be praised at its height even though that glory would pass. There are many times in life when we know that things will not be as good as they are right now. And nevertheless, we should always focus on that wonderful moment that's now and, and not become downcast by the thought that it may not and will not last forever. Judaism says that we should not live for the moment, but we should certainly live in the moment. We should thank God for all the wonderful things we experience in this world, even though those moments will pass. And I think that's a very good lesson to take away from the end of Yom Tov.